In another case, people talk about communication. And it means that when you are sending a message, so you send a message to someone, it means that the feedback you receive from the message, it's what's important. Since uh, it, doesn't, it doesn't really matter what the message is, because if you're sending a message, whatever that means, what you get back, or the whatever value output, whatever you call it, in the feedback, that's what the intended result is. So it doesn't mean, uh, a lot of people, you know, people should listen to me or whatever they're talking about, so they will, you know, understand. That's not how it works. Uh, when I'm starting, for example, the golf swing, and other, uh, like NLP, uh, a phenomenon like discrepancy happens. That's a big word, but the word, what it, uh, you know, symbolize or whatever you call it, it means it's different or as it doesn't match. So whatever message people send out or receive or and the feedback they get back, it does match up. And we can talk about this in different ways. And what, what's going on. But that's the human brain. The human brain add information. It add. It uh, it's add means it plus. It's it's a positive thing we add to something. It's, we are, you know, oh, that's good because we are adding something. What does that mean? Well, let's say someone sent out the brochure. This is a workshop I'm going to do. I'm doing a workshop. And they tell you a message in there. They have a message in that workshop. And they are then teaching you this, you know, this thing or message or whatever method or technology or a pattern or whatever in the workshop. So the intended result, in this case, is the brochure and this brochure Yeah. Okay. And then people enter the workshop. Yeah, okay, cool. They enter the workshop. They're starting to enter the workshop. It's like Enter the Dragon with Bruce Lee. Woo! It's a cool movie, by the way, back in the day. So they enter the workshop and they intend to get the result from the workshop. What happens is the message people have in the brochure doesn't match the workshop. There's a discrepancy there, this is a mismatch. And the funny thing what happens with people who enter the workshop, they in some ways are telling themselves they didn't understand it. Obviously they are either too stupid or or something like that. Right? We assume that we don't understand it, we didn't get the result, that we didn't do whatever the individual they were presenting. So a lot of NLP, for example, and other similar technologies using a lot of hypnosis to cover up that there is discrepancy there. Now, in the golf swing, this happens this way, in the following way. There's a similarity or a analogy. The golf swing. People tell you, and tell me and other people, that when you teach a golf swing, you're going to teach something so you can do that, do the pattern. When you do the pattern, what happens is, in the next step, is that you get worse. So I'm teaching someone, and I'm teaching a pattern, and they are getting worse when they do the pattern. So what's going on there? I'm not doing that, by the way, they do that. What happens is the PK style trainer teach people that in the golf swing, and they get worse. And it takes about one year to two years to get better. One, two years to do that. Because the player has to uh, have the discrepancy here. They must, they must adapt to the teacher so they can do it. And, and I'm, this adaption is the problem with the, because the player will eventually figure it out or 
they will fail and they will stay uh, bad if you like uh, for years years to come they still believe in the teaching that the teaching is right and they don't understand it what happens is they fail to adapt to the teachings when I'm teaching a goals way I'm teaching a way so people can do it can do it and it took me four hours and two days to teach someone to do what I'm teaching. So in two days he got the message and he could do it. He didn't get this, he didn't get worse. He got better. So I figure out how to teach the golf swing in a way that people get better and not worse. That's what I'm doing when I'm doing as a, as a golf game. I'm not teaching the golf swing. I'm teaching the golf swing. I also teach the game of golf, which means how to prepare and uh, be able to increase and enhance skills. Skills. And if you are able to increase skills and, and such, in a way they create a feedback loop so you get better all the time, better. I get a lot better here now. Ooh, yeah, I'm cool. So you get a lot better, right? And you have a feedback loop that you always continue to get better and all that stuff. So that leads me to the next point. I'm able to do this. I'm able to do make people better from the bad. PK style golf trainer, it's not. They don't understand how the brain works and how to understand. So they they <coughs> have to. As they have a student that has to adapt to the teaching. I don't. I don't need the student to adapt to my teaching. I can adapt to the students so they can understand this material by doing it. Now, Krista on the website I have asked me this question. You know, how do I become better? A few years ago, I had a workshop with RBIM, a guy who asked me, how do I read faster? How do I read faster? He asked me this question six times. Six times he asked me this question. The same answer was given for me every time. So my answer to his question, read faster, was the same. Read faster. My answer <clears throat> he couldn't hear for six times. So I gave him the answer. He, he, he asked the same question. I gave him the same answer. He asked me the same question. It took him six times to understand there was a difference here. That means that this student had to adapt to whatever someone you know, six times before they even got to the answer. That means but whatever they're going to do in their world, in the, inside the head or whatever they when they communicate with people, they won't understand this <laughs> when people say the things to them. Because they're going to make up a lot of distortions and all this kind of stuff about six times before they even get them. <clears throat> when he finally got to understand that my answer was to read faster, he went to ask me how to do that. Now I understood that already when he asked the question. So I said the same answer, you read faster. Now he, uh, he assumed there was some secret to it, but I said, no, it's no secret, you read faster. Well, if I read faster, I don't feel good. So the problem here is for him is to, you know, if I'm reading faster, I'm reading faster. Okay, what happens then? Well, you, you will feel differently because you will process the information differently. So if you're reading faster, you don't understand the information at the same pace, right? The pace is different because you're not processing information differently. And he didn't want to do that. So, and since he didn't want to do that, he didn't want to read faster. Because he assumed that you could read faster and still be the same. No change happens or no shift. Or he assumed to be the same. And that's not what's happened when you change or whatever you're doing in your life. I have maybe a golf player, right? They come to me and say, well, I want to learn the golf thing from you. Cool, I say. I implement uh, a way of them to find their own 
to own their own golf swing. And I'm not teaching you a technique. A lot of people in the golf industry teach technique. And they try to fix things they think is wrong with the golf swing. I, earlier today, one guy from Golf VRX told me when I'm going to fix uh, the hand action of Hans Andersson, which I'm hand action. He asked me when I'm going to fix his hand action, and uh, my answer to him was that whenever he is able to play or hit better shot than Hans, then I might fix it. And some coffee, uh, superb coffee today. So, this add addition to something uh, uh, counts for how the human brain works with this reference. So, in the goal swing, Mike Austin, for example, was uh, finding out how to do the goal swing. But when you try to understand, this applies to me also, when you make this addition, it's part of the adaption people do. And I'm not going to go too far into that in this area or something like that, or even here. Uh, it's about, you know, RBIM, for example. We deal with this, and we, this is what I'm teaching people, that the addition we do here is how consciousness operates. That's how consciousness operates in our brain. So let's say you have a context. Whatever that context might be, right? Let's say it's uh, having breakfast. I'm having breakfast. Uh, and then I ask people, uh, what's, what's your experience in eating breakfast? And people go like, well, it's, you know, it's breakfast. It's okay. So it's okay. And I say, and the crystal asked me, how do you make things better? Right? The question is, how do I get people to get better, whatever they're doing, you know? How do I get to... Well, the same answer is as I was telling my student here, right? In the beginning here. Uh, oh, that was thought to be, how was that one? Oh, read faster, right? Read faster six times, right? My answer was still the same, read faster. So my answer with this would be, you make yourself be better. So the people do something, uh, whatever that means, let's say it's a Monday, and this Monday I'm going to eat breakfast. But most people in the brain go like, this Monday is the same as the previous Monday, a week ago. And since time is a context, time, time is a context, if you understand time, that's the context. So this Monday, um, whatever that Monday might be, is then the same as the previous Monday for this for this individual. So the generalization here is well, I decided that this Monday is the same as next uh, the previous Monday, and the life sucks, right? That's what people do constantly. So they are acting and behaving on previous time. Whenever a Monday happens for me, breakfast is okay. It's a new Monday. It's a new Monday. It's a new breakfast. So that means even though I'm eating the same food, for example, it's not the same food, it's a new food, uh, it just looks the same. So a lot of people uh, are in the trap of generalizations. That creates a perception for them that things are the same. Things are the same, they say. Things are the same, and people say, "What's the, what are those things?" Well, that's what you're thinking. Things are thinking. Just because you're thinking it doesn't mean it's solid and real, because that's how your brain relates and integrates. When things, when you're thinking in your brain, for your brain, that's real. That's real. And the the brain goes like, "What's more real for you?" So you, I will do that, basically. Because the brain doesn't make choices for you, it just do things for you. That's the difference. 
the brain to do things for you because you have to decide whatever it's going to do. We do that with addition. We add something to things. In this case, so this Monday, there's a new breakfast. I'm going to have a wonderful experience, whatever I'm deciding. I'm going to have my experience having this breakfast today. And I add that it will be better than the last one. That's what I do. I'm adding that. Add better than the last one. Then, Krista, it's going to be better. Now, some people tell me, well, if I do that, it doesn't work. And I say, well, then you have to do the RBIM drill. And you have to do the RBIM drill. And interflow. And you do that to combine the attention with which is representation with vestibular action. That's the body. When you do this properly, uh, something called space happens. Space. And people say, what space? Well, you're already, you're already doing it. So this is a drill to make sure you become aware of it. You become aware. Woohoo! I'm aware of it! I can feel the space. It's a sensation of your consciousness operating in space. So that means when you're deciding to make things better, like we talk about there, I'm adding something to make this better. So I'm adding to the breakfast to be better next time. And that's because we do two things at the same time always. We are, for one thing, having the present moment that's always there, present moment. In this case, you're watching a YouTube video here now. That's your present moment, right? Yes or no? That's a yes, by the way. Yes, I'm watching you, Robert, talking about the present moment on some paper you're writing. Okay, cool. I understand that. I, I get that. Okay. So the present moment, you will have an experience. You will probably, you know, finding out, is this something I can use or is it fun or whatever it is. It's like Star Trek, uh, when the captain Picard or something, uh, engage, he say, engage. And in the context of Star Trek, it means that the Starship Enterprise is now flowing through space. Oh, yeah. You see, it's just a metaphor. The, actually, the Starship Enterprise is a TV show, so the Starship Enterprise can't travel anywhere. They're just in the studio, and then and they have the Enterprise is traveling to space. It's made up in the computer-generated graphics and stuff like that. And in the Star Wars, uh, there is no Jedi Knights, by the way. There is no Jedi Knights. Or Santa Claus or something like that. There's just uh, uh, people in James Bond, by the way, doesn't exist. A lot of people have a trouble with me telling you know, that Sherlock Holmes doesn't exist either because I have seen Sherlock Holmes in a movie. And I go like, which version? Wow, the real one, the good one. And I go like, it doesn't exist. But people think this is just imagined stuff. It just imagines. I don't imagine James Bond like a cool character, you know, on tape. You know. Oh, yeah, I read the book about it. And then it was a movie. Then it's about uh, pop culture. So you're watching in the present moment YouTube, yes. And I was just telling you a story about something you imagine. And what, that's what you do in life. You imagine things and add information. So if you have a present moment YouTube, you have an experience here, right? Okay, cool. What kind of experience do you want to have? And this is what you add to. You decide what this experience is going to be like. You're going to enjoy the video. If you're, you can also decide. Uh, do I'm going to, am I going to learn something that I can use to understand drill or something like that? No, I don't know. Maybe, maybe not. When I'm teaching the RBM drill, I'm teaching it the same way in the workshop as I teach it in the video. You move your arm like this. And people go, well, I can move my arm and nothing happens. And I go, you have to uh, then make sure your consciousness is tied to the vestibular system. How do I do that? Well, you focus on the muscles move. When you can see the muscles move inside the arm. And I say, people go like, inside the arm? Inside the arm? They go like, 
You have a finger arrow, right? And a thumb, big thumb. And then you have a wrist, cool arm. And you have an arm here, Ooh. and you have an elbow here somewhere. Whether that's the elbow, I don't know. It depends on the perspective you have, right? So inside the arm, you see the muscles move like this. If you can't do that, then you're not doing it right. That's then you can't have the space. And I can't teach people that because you have to discover that for yourself. So it's either or, right? Most people can't do that because they are constantly rerouting their own consciousness all the time. They are feeding back the pattern of their own consciousness. They can't change because they have to stay the same, as I was talking about earlier. They have to stay the same. Present moment, you have this experience, whatever that is, and you, you say, okay, I'll give an example. Uh, last year, I was going to spend three weeks in Spain. In Spain, I was going to coach a golfer, right? So I decided to be in the zone for those three weeks. And people say, well, what do you mean by the zone? The zone is when you are the utmost perfect experience when you are doing sport performance. So the first week when I was, I was in the zone, and then I dropped out of it. Uh, because I was tired, I was not in the best physical shape, and I had an iron deficiency and all that stuff. I've not been well the last one years. And one reason was that is I have a, developed an iron deficiency the last few years, so I was tired because I can oxygenate my own blood or stuff like that. That's really important for the brain, by the way. So whenever I was in the zone, and then I dropped down, since I dropped up for a while, I went back up in the zone again. I went up in the zone again, and I dropped up. And the sooner of, over the three weeks, I was more and more in the zone. So people say, because most people expect when you do things like army, I am well, it's going to be a perfect way. This is like the people who studied Ben Hogan. He's a golfer in the uh, 60s, 50s, and 40s. They assume he knew the secret of the golf swing. When I'm watching a golf YouTube video, when, he, when this guy was explaining what he was doing in the golf swing, and discrepancy happens, I knew that he didn't know his secret. He didn't, he didn't have any secret because he didn't understand his own golf swing. So, if you ask me when I study people and they say things and they don't do what they say, I understand that whatever they are talking about, they don't understand what they are doing. It doesn't match. And a lot of people then listen to this guy what he was talking about, the study him, when he obviously wasn't. Obviously then they can't do it. They can't do it. And as far I have seen, no one is able to, or this, let's say, 50 years. No one who has studied Ben Hogan is able to do what Ben Hogan was doing. No one. So every, that's like one million people say, study Ben Hogan, the boys he was doing with the swing and all that. People can't do it. So, I mean, that's because people get stuck in the idea of it's going to happen. And I will write a new paper with that. Yes, that's it's so important. And this is the final task for today's video. People get stuck in the mystery of it's going to happen. And that's a thing that the human brain is doing. It's, belief, it's, it's based on faith. And most people say, is that religious? No, it's not. It's not. It's how the brain actually works. So if, if you go to a golf swing teacher, you go to a teacher, right? And you assume and they teach you that you will be able to do it. Able to do it. And if you're not able to do it, you will either, as I've been saying before, either adapt to it, so you're are able to do it or it will fail but here is the thing when you fail you the mystery happens and it becomes a, a self-fulfilling prophecy, prophecy here so you assume you're going to learn how to do it you're going to be able to do it because that's what the teacher is telling you so you implement what the teacher is doing and telling you to do it and it doesn't work. Now, some people say, well, isn't that true with your RBI and the Robert down? Right? Cool. And I say, yes, and I have a problem with that. Because RBI and real, when I'm teaching people in person, is different. Slightly different than just watching on YouTube. Because I can, not, uh, I can observe the feedback when I'm talking to you. 
I can observe the feedback and see if you're doing it right or not. So it can then adjust it for you and say, well, you have to focus your attention here. For me, it's easy to move people's attention around because most people have no idea where their attention is. And when you're trying to master the RBM drill, and if you can't do it, you will get more and more focused because you haven't mastered it yet. So I don't have any trouble. People can't be able to do it because we just start to make things, try to make, master it to get the effective space here. While they're not able to do it, they get more focused, which is a good thing. Because most people who have a problem can't focus properly. They can't focus and say, and I go like to someone, okay, uh, we're going to eat uh, food here now, whatever that means, and I'm going to have this experience, I say. And I just decide that and do that. I do that. That's because I add to this new context, because it's a new context for me, it's a future one, I haven't done it, I haven't eaten food yet. So I had it's going to be this experience. And when I add that experience, it happens for me. So the other individual I'm going to eat food with, they have the old reference, they have the old it's going to be, you know, the food I have been eating before or something like that. So they're not going to have the same experience I have, you know, because I'm able to add and make myself my own experience better. Because it's true, if you have this YouTube experience, right, as you're watching now, you have this YouTube experience right now, and whatever experience you have is something you add actively. That's something you have to add actively. That's because that's when you add it actively, you're using intention. And then your intention adds, make you experience better of your YouTube experience watching right now, or not. If you can't do it, you can't do it. Discrepancy happens in better home. And this is um, how consciousness over consciousness is created as an ongoing phenomenon. I've been writing about that for three years. It's an ongoing creation. Consciousness is an ongoing creation. That means whatever you perceive right now, if, you, if you're watching me on YouTube here, right? And whatever you perceive watching this the first time or the second time or the third time, it's going to be a little bit different every time you watch it because you understand you have access to the information when you watch it the first time, right? And so when you watch it the second or third time, there's going to be difference. But most people uh, wait for that difference to happen. What we do in RBM, we teach people to uh, assume that you already can do it or already have learned it. You can already do it, can do it or you have already learned it. So we then use what we call uh, we, uh, anticipate, anticipate or assume that we already can do it. We add to that when we are watching YouTube. If I'm going to watch a swing on YouTube, for example, or if I'm going to watch an NLP guy, whatever it is, I assume I already can do it and already have learned it. And that means my categorization, my brain is going to sort this information differently. And that goes back to the message I was talking about in the beginning about the discrepancy and brain and feedback and all that stuff. The message. See, if I'm sending a message out, I'm going to get the feedback as a result of that message. Now, for example, my website, I can present a different message. I can present it in a more business kind of a lot of people have complained to me because I'm not writing it business-like. I should write more selling. More business, you know. I will teach you success. Making a lot of making. A lot of money. I'm going to teach you how to make orgasms. Bigger, better, longer, more lasting. Has anyone going to the Bandler workshop, for example, when he was talking about that, make that happen? And I challenge anyone to actually say they have. So he was, he's talking about that, but he can't do that, just so you know what's going on, right? And I can write a more persuasion, persuasion, 
I can write a more persuasive message using hypnosis language. So you could, you know, make your own so-called um, meaning out of what I'm, wow, this workshop is going to be great and everybody else is going to get great and all that stuff. And if I'm going to present a workshop, The workshop I'm presenting is the same you see or read about my YouTube videos or read um, YouTube here or as a write on my blog. It's not going to be any different. Jose Rigi, for example, 2003 made a workshop when he was talking about and presented in his brochure a message about that kind of workshop. And I asked him a question about that workshop and I got 30 metaphors, 30 stories. He was telling me metaphors about the question he presented in his brochure he was going to teach people on the workshop. He couldn't tell me what that was. And I was like, you know, if I'm going to do a workshop, I assume when I was going to teach that it's going to be the same what I'm doing in any case. So he is doing this crepusine. He doesn't know what he's doing. And he calls himself the precision guy. And I don't find that true at all. That's just, you know, Bullshit. Uh, and this is kind of what Ben is doing, telling people the more words. He he can't teach that. It doesn't happen to people. So if that doesn't happen, that's what he's calling the mystery of people. People assume this is kind of cool, so that will also happen. It's not true. And that's what I'm telling people about this stuff. It's, you know, it's just pure bullshit. So that goes to, you know, the trash can. And this is, I think it's important to understand that there's a difference, as Gregory Bateson was talking about, difference. I don't teach what I'm doing myself with whatever what people call what I'm doing. I don't, I don't teach that because that's too hard for me. I don't understand my own, you know, personal reference, whatever you call it. I know what I'm doing, but I, I know it's too difficult for me to explain what I'm, what I'm doing because I, I think it's simple. Whatever I'm doing, think, I think it's simple. And since Chris asked me about how do I make things better, well, basically you just add. So it has the future, it has to have a future reference. So even though it's the same thing, it's Monday, or it's morning, or it's work, or it's your kid, most people are acting upon a past past reference. So whatever is going on in your present moment, or even you're watching YouTube here now, you're acting from a past reference when you're watching this YouTube movie. This is moment now. This is the moment. You're watching me writing this, right? So you're watching me writing those. Okay, cool. So what kind of experience do you have? Oh, and my question is always like, you know, what kind of experience do you want to have? what makes watching the YouTube video much more enjoyable or, you know, learnable or, you know, whatever you call it. And I ask people to actually add to the context to be whatever you want it to be, to create a reality as an ongoing phenomenon of your consciousness. That's what's, you, that's what's already happening. You're already doing this. But you're not aware of you, uh, you're able to do this and doing this at the moment. And what I'm teaching people to do in the RBM system is to become aware. That you're already doing this, but you're using a past reference. You're using this past reference of the Monday. It's the same Monday that was last month. For me, it's a new Monday. Still the same day as everybody. So that's how your brain is working. You, Most people can't... Okay, we're going to uh, give us a single example. I was driving, uh, Hans was driving to the golf course. He, he was going to play 18 holes. So he was going to play 18 holes here, right? And while we was driving the car, we were driving a car here. Or he was driving a car, right? He was driving the car. And I was asking, where uh, are you going to play on the golf course? And it was, uh, yes, it was him. So are we on the way to the golf? If we were on the way, he said. We were not there already. 
we were driving, he said. We were on the way to the golf course. And I asked, what, 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 what will happen if, if you already was in at the golf course? We had already arrived at the golf course and you're going to play already. So he made that difference. He added that when he was driving. He was still driving. Still driving. He added that we were already arrived at the golf course. I saw the shift in his attention and his focus, and he shifted to be at the golf course, at the golf course. And suddenly his experience in the moment, in the present moment when you're watching this writing here, changed. It, sh it shifted. And he said his driving altered. He was feeling more relaxed, he felt, felt more space when, you know, he had more, you know, you know, more space. He, he, he couldn't explain it, but I watched the shift happen before he even uh, knew that it, was, it didn't happen. And that because we had to become aware of the context is going on right now. Sorry about that. We add. It is an active process we're doing. So the context we are acting or reality we are engaged into or the perceive whatever it is, is something you do actively. You don't need a technology like NLP to do this because they don't understand how to do that or teach that. They can't do that in the system. And I'm not saying this is easy to understand. I, I don't. Uh, I don't expect people to. You know. Ooh, I, I, what do I need to understand is to do RBI? Yeah, I don't know. I said I don't know because I'm not the right person to ask. Because when people ask me about RBI, I said this, this is really easy and simple for me to do. And I understand that people don't have that kind of. Uh, but I've been doing this for twenty years, so something like that. I've been doing this for twenty years. Back in nineteen ninety-two, I was doing this ad. I was adding something and I was creating this kind of experience and I didn't understand that at the time. And since I didn't understand that, this is the same thing with the golf swing. If I'm able to golf using the golf swing and teach someone to do it and I was, and I was able to also do it myself. But if I'm lacking this what happened with me when I was doing it and I didn't understand well, what was going on because I had no reference to it, I had no comparison. So I was able to do it, but it couldn't explain it. So then I had to find a way to explain it so I can do it better and do it more and do it more consistently. And that's what I've been doing for the last uh, three years in the golf and, and I'm able to teach that and all that stuff. And I, when I was doing this uh, addition of the consciousness, I didn't understand what I was doing. What I did discover by accident was that what I'm teaching today in the RBIM system. Some people say, well, are you teaching the uh, model of middle self or Roy Francis model? No, I'm not. I'm teaching what I was finding out myself back in 1992. It's just people assume that I'm teaching a model about Joseph Riggs, middle self or Roy Francis, generative imprint or iconic something. Like I'm teaching you something that's way beyond that. Joseph Riggin doesn't even know about that, so people say, well, you know, you, you should think uh, whatever it is. I'm understanding that I'm teaching you something that's not, you know, in their models, I'm teaching you that's in my model. And this is about the message, uh, message and all that, and it's about the feedback you receive. So I've been going through all this, the same basic pattern. I'm sending out a, a message here, right? I will get some feedback and result back from this kind of message this YouTube video. And depending on what discrepancies you have got from this video and present back to me, I will understand how my message was received. And the feedback is delayed obviously because it's not uh, real time. So if you have any question, please feel free to ask. It's our or not.